Okay, so in this video I'm going to discuss the difference between an average and an instantaneous reaction rate. So, suppose we have this simple reaction scheme here where we have A forms B. One reactant, one product, and you can also assume that the you know coefficients in front of these are 1, 2. Why not? Just to keep it simple. And this blue curve here, well this is a concentration versus time curve that shows the concentration of B over time. And it, it looks like it makes sense because it's increasing as the reaction proceeds, which of course makes sense because B is a product, not a reactant. So first let's go over how we generally get an average reaction rate. So in general what we do is we pick two points to work with. So I'll just pick two points. How about those two? So this point has a time and a concentration associated with it and so does this point. This distance down here we call that delta T and this distance over here we call delta concentration of B. And to get an average rate we just say that the rate is equal to delta concentration of B over delta T. That is the expression for an average reaction rate over the time interval T. So now suppose so, so now just suppose that we instead of choosing two points to define our reaction rate, suppose I want to find the reaction I want to find the reaction rate at this instant right here. At this time and at this concentration. I want to find basically in other words I want to find the slope of the line that is tangent to, the, to this concentration versus time curve. So if you've taken basically if you've taken first semester calculus already you've sort of run into this tangent problem already and how calculus is used to solve it. So for you calculus fans <laughs> the way to solve this is well what we do is we say that since this is an instant we're gonna let our time interval delta t get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so that means that we're gonna end up expressing this as a limit so that we say we say that the rate is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero because like I said we're making our time interval smaller and smaller and smaller the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta concentration of B over delta t this whole term here can also be expressed as d concentration of B dt where the lowercase d means that it's a differential so it's an infinitesimal change in these two quantities so if, if that's over your head right now uh, don't worry about it but that's basically what defines an instantaneous rate of a chemical reaction so there you go.